One of the funniest things that has happened during my lifetime as a theologian has been how systematics has gone in and out of fashion. And I get the distinct impression now that systematics, approaching theology in an organized and very deliberative way, is back in fashion. Michael, am I right? <laughs> I, th I think you're very much right. Um, and in one sense, to, to understand precisely why it's back in fashion or how it's come about fashion, you need to kind of understand uh, the field of systematics itself in the last kind of 60 or 70 years. Um, systematic theologians like talking about how their discipline has been in decline and if it's been in a kind of crisis. Yeah, I've heard them all a lot, a lot of times. Yeah. Talking about it, um, even getting to a point of you really won't find many people saying they're a systematic theologian any longer. Instead, preferring the term constructive theologian, that they do constructive theology. And, and they do constructive theology. And part of this decline has to do with, I think, is a, fit, a feature of, of modernity and a dissatisfaction with an understanding that uh, all God talk could somehow be systemized, systematized into a kind of neat package where all the different kind of doctrines, the doctrine of God, ecclesiology, eschatology, um, Christology, the doctrine of atonement, could somehow hang together in a neat kind of way. That if human, is human rationality or the human mind sufficient enough to allow for something like this, if the object of its study is so far beyond the kind of comprehension. Is such a thing possible? So you, you get a, a certain kind of criticism, I think, from um, uh, a kind of rationalist kind of perspective. You also get a criticism from uh, in the increasing ascendancy of, of contextual theologies, theologies that kind of look back on the kind of great systematics, um, Aquinas' Summa, um, um, Barth's Church Dogmatics, Schleiermacher's Christian Faith. Um, all of these are purported to be almost a kind of contextualist theology. And what contextual theology says is there's no theology done in a vacuum. Theology is always done by a particular person in a particular context. So Aquinas' Summa assumes the kinds of philosophical uh, in vogue um, movements at that, at, at that particular time. Um, the kinds of things that uh, a medieval Latin monk might be interested in. Well, that might look very, very different in how one looks at the different doctrines than if, say, um, you are coming out of the Holocaust mm -hmm. or um, you are a black theologian like James Cone. So there's been lots of these different criticisms um, to systematic theology itself. But in the last 15 or 20 years, you're starting to get the form itself is kind of coming back. So you're, you're finding people like Robert Jensen, um, Stanley Grenz, um, Sarah Coakley, and even one of the more recent ones, Catherine Sonderager has come out with one, which is just absolutely fascinating because it doesn't seem to have all of the hang-ups of these previous criticisms, but instead to just get down to the work of doing theology for the church and doing systematics that it has a role to play for us. So do you see that in new terms like constructive theology, actually a rebirth of the classical desire that an individual would make a theological statement that somehow speaks to the whole of Christian faith. That's, that, that's exactly right. And w what's interesting is there are many, well, what's, what's really interesting about some of these other systematic books that are coming out now is they, a lot of them still attend to some of the kind of criticisms of... Um, the, th these new books, what criticisms do they attend to? Um, they attend to precisely the criticisms that theology has to be done within a particular context. So Sarah Coakley's systematics attends to uh, the perspective 
of uh, a feminist theologian um, <clears throat> in Britain, recognizing that these th particular contours of how she looks at the text themselves are going to influence how she reads them. And yet, she still wants to read the tradition itself, still wants to read Augustine, still wants to read Aquinas, but um, is returning to a particular kind of way of doing, uh, of, of systematizing theology. Michael, thank you very much.